Here you see the topic, technology as a fashion statement. We at Wired Germany, we always do and continuously and regularly do a fashion technology reporting. So this is our current issue. We do a, did a big uh, story on Netflix and how it's changing TV. But we also reported on this uh, two women on this picture who are uh, doing um, a textile printer which is called Algemi and they use microalgaes to color clothes. And they were at the first fashion tech conference back here in January and they are Berlin based. So in March we did a whole issue on fashion tech, a 14 pages special. Our cover star is a famous German hip hop band from Hamburg called Deichkind and they use fashion technology themselves for the stage outfits. So Philip of Deichkind here is wearing his own suit, is smoking with all a lot of mobiles on it. When we did this issue we figured out fashion tech is always between two opposites. One is style, like here on the left hand. Um, Berlin, uh, a jacket from the Berlin-based artist Trafopop, which works with lights and has to be look nice. And the other one is a bicycle helmet, which works more like an airbag, so you only wear this nice little thing around the, your neck. And then the functionality is, if you have the accident, if you fell down, the airbag comes around your head. Or another example, on the left hand, Philip is wearing a jacket, um, which was developed by Fraunhofer Institute, and uh, has this screen interface, and the other one is a bodysuit developed by, by a Dutch designer, and this bodysuit is um, can censor the air quality and even um, make it better, so the idea of it. So it's always between style and functionality. And that's why I'm really happy that I have two women here um, who are for both sides. So one is Lisa Lang, please Lisa come on stage. Lisa is a Berlin-based entrepreneur and she just started her own company which is called Electro Couture, which she will introduce to you in a few minutes. And the other one is Martina Pickard. Tina, please come on stage. She, is, um, she has a long time experience in the IT and tech industry working as a consultant for several years for big IT companies like uh, in Germany like United Internet and Nugget. She also founded a company back in the new economy times, isn't it? Yeah, true. True. And since October, you're working for Microsoft Services as a lead architect, and you're focusing on CMO, CM, yeah, on marketing stuff and Internet of Things stuff. So, and so we have those both cool ladies, and Tina is starting to introduce her design approach to fashion tech, and then Tina will introduce it to the, her approach and her functionality and sensor approach uh, to fashion tech. So please welcome those two and. Have fun and enjoy. Hi, this is awesome. The room is full, fantastic. Okay, let's make you glow because, uh, by the way, that's what we do. So, hi, I'm Lisa. I uh, founded Electro Couture last year in Berlin, um, based out of frustration because there was something I wanted in the market and it wasn't available, uh, so I just decided to build it myself. And what I wanted was uh, pretty stuff which glows and with like really cool technology infused, which is washable and bendable and I can go on a bicycle or on high heels with it. And, and there was nothing there. So that's how Electro Couture was born. Um, and uh, we just, this week we just launched our second collection and we also launched it officially on ASOS Marketplace. So we are the very first ready-to-wear fashion technology collection, which is on the top 10 e-commerce fashion platforms. And you can buy the stuff, and you can wear it, and you can wash it, and you can recharge it. Um, and uh, this is a, a part of our collection, uh, our scarf design. Um, we also, one of those things is, you know, those unsexy things, is you have to think about battery technology. Um, so we just developed our own batteries. Um, all of our scarves, they have like tiny little battery systems in there and you just recharge them with a USB cable. So just in case if you see a lot of people with like their scarf plugged into their laptop to charge it, don't worry, that's just the future, welcome. Um, 
One of the things for our um, early pieces, and also at the moment our bestseller, is our frozen necklace. Uh, it's like an art deco design. Um, art deco is actually awesome. It's like maths in sexy because it's pure symmetry. It's really soothing for your brain also because it loves symmetry. Um, and we made it glow, of course. Um, and uh, uh, it has a very like small battery system in there. Uh, you don't get electrocuted, don't worry, but you will be seen at night everywhere. And uh, yeah, also what we do, we love collaborations. So like designers out there, come to me, I can make you glow, literally. Um, I reached out to this uh, fabulous woman last year. I, I think she is here. Um, uh, uh, Anja from Miyamano. It's a Polish uh, fashion label. And I loved her jacket and uh, coat designs. And I said, like, this is what I want. You know, I want to feel like a strong warrior without looking like a circus pony. I love your jackets. I can make it glow. It's my line. Sorry, it's, you know, always comes. Um, so um, I borrowed a couple of coats from her and we put our technology into it and with that we developed a mini collection and uh, she's also on the market with us and uh, uh, we will actually go to New York on the runway with that glowing as like the last final piece with it. So um, I love collaborations. Also, you know, since I'm like still a little bit German, I love efficiency. With that we can be like really fast. Um, so if anybody wants to like, you know, uh, uh, go into fashion technology, be my friend, come here. We have a beer in the beer garden here. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, one of those things we also do is um, uh, we make show pieces of like for every collection. We just go a little bit crazy because we can. Um, and then we have like one one-off show piece. Um, you can see that one in action at Microsoft, at the Digital Eatery, at Under den Linden. Um, yeah, just follow the light, it's there. Um, so it will be there until tomorrow night, and uh, this is this concept is called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and the idea just was like I wanted to have the midnight sky being wearable in a dress, and it's dedicated to Lucy, our very first model, because she was brave enough to wear it. She's still alive. Don't worry. Yeah, it's, this joke is going on all the time. Sorry. Um, yeah, so we're making like one of bespoke pieces. This one will actually run in a Berlin opera, and you might see it at the Mozart uh, um, sonnet or something on stage. Um, right. And yeah, of course, you know, I have to do the business side. Uh, you can buy us, really, uh, at ASOS from this week onwards. Right, that was from me. Uh, thank you very much. We will, you know, I'll just hand it over. Uh, but yeah, seriously, like, talk with me because there's one thing we have to do. Fashion technology, we have to join two industries together and that means you guys, the tech guys and the fashion guys, they have to talk to each other, right? My seamstress had to learn how to solder and my tech guy who has a PhD in physics, he had to learn physics of, of material, right? So this is the only way how we can work together and make like really cool shit. You have to work and talk to each other. So start with me. <laughs> so hello. Um, for everybody who is wondering what's Microsoft doing here, uh, we entered the variable market uh, one or two years ago with a Microsoft band. Um, who knows the Microsoft Band? Yeah, some. So the Microsoft Band, unfortunately, it's not an available in Germany um, today. Um, it's, of course, a fitness band like, you know, several other bands. Um, but Microsoft is not only into health, like um, tracking your, um, your physical activities or sleep tracking or uh, how much calories you burned today. It's also combining, um, or we are combining it with productivity and um, efficiency. So you are, a uh, uh, you are able to connect, for example, to your office suite and you can speak with your band with Cortana, which is the theory of Microsoft. Um, and you can, for example, ask Cortana about driving directions and you speak with the band, which is really great. Um, this is um, the first variable uh, we bring into the market. The second is the HoloLens. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about the HoloLens. The HoloLens is, um, you can imagine it like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something like, like the, the Facebook um, 
uh, augmented rented, uh, yeah. augmented reality Oculus. glasses. Yeah, no, it's not augmented reality. It it's is mixed too, reality. It? Yeah. It's okay, similar it's to the Oculus Rift, um, but it's more a holographic computer on Windows 10, um, which is uh, which renders your holographics into the real world, which is a little bit different to augmented reality or virtual reality. So Oculus Rift is more um, a virtual re reality environment where you have an immersive uh, experience which is completely in 3D. And um, with the uh, holograms of HoloLens, yeah, you can interact with holograms in the real world. So you could also do fashion shows with it. Exactly. And uh, before I forget this, um, Yesterday, we announced um, a program for, the Holo, for HoloLens developers. We, we are going to open it for developers, and we are searching for, um, for some interested casing, cases. And you are funding them, isn't it? Yeah, a we are funding money. them. We, are, um, we announced five awards. Each of it um, is a let me, um, 100,000 US dollar grant um, for developers for cases. So you are all invited to apply, um, and I hope we get some developers from Germany into this program. Would be really great. Thank you, thank you, Tina. Yeah, um, mentioning the Microsoft Band, what I'm really interested in, and what I think it's a good point for this discussion: how can style and technology merge? So, because I tried several bands, but then you always have this black thing around you. Uh, around here, and I haven't tried the Microsoft one yet because it's only out today, you said. Um, what I'm uh, testing right now is this watch. I don't know if you know it. It's a, it looks like a watch, isn't it? It's by a French company. It's called Withings or Withings. And this little thing here is uh, tracking my steps each day, and it's connecting with my app, and it's also tracking my sleep. So, and I really like this watch at the moment because it looks like a watch, and the battery is lasting for eight months. And um, I'm really interested in how can develop things more in this direction and don't look so technically like some things to took look. So, what do you think is the future? Do we all have to wear these big, big Hololens glasses in the future? No, I don't think. I don't think so. And and uh, you are absolutely correct. Um, the whole bands, um, like the Fitbit or the Microsoft band, are not the sexiest. Um, accessoire you can wear. This is really more a fashion statement than a Microsoft band um, in terms of fashion. So I think um, one important question is what will be in future a fashion statement? Um, is it still the clothing or is it the connection of your jacket to a platform and the platform or to a social graph? And how we, how we can build a social graph um, in an intelligent way on my fabrics. And there are, of course, fabrics um, today in place and in developing, in development, which are really intelligent. So from my personal point of view, all these devices um, are maybe in the market for 10 years, but after that, um, we will see more intelligent clothes, and you, are, you, are, you can use a device, but it's not necessary anymore. How did Because, you approach this, yeah. Lisa? I mean, you, you, you are into glowing now, obviously, <laughs> um, but how do, did you approach putting technology, or how did you approach putting technology into clothes, and what do you think is the next step beyond it glows? Right, so uh, we use fashion like a user interface. Um, it's, so we usually don't start with the technology or with the fashion, we start with the concept and the story. And then like kind of reverse engineering, like okay, like what do we need to tell this story? Um, so it's can, a, you, it, can you do this more concrete? Do you have an example? Yeah. So uh, um, the dress, for instance, like the, the Lucy with the, guy, the sky with diamonds. So like the idea was, I want to make the midnight sky wearable. And then we said like, okay, so what do we need? Like you start with the color, okay, like we 
you know, need like midnight blue and we need like, you know, white uh, for, for the, the stars. And, uh, and then we just like played around with it. And, uh, and then we just came that we actually should like use a corsage because you have like this really nice structure of like, you know, uh, uh, star, uh, um, uh, star installations or something like that. But, uh, but also it had to be wearable. Also, we had to construct in a way so the model can actually go on the toilet while she's wearing it. Um, otherwise, we have to do a dress rehearsal every two hours. So, um, you know, all of those practical things. Um, but so, and because fashion is the user interface, it's always like there on the forefront. And what we actually try to do is like make the technology as invisible as as possible. Um, that because apart from the glowing. Apart from the glowing, but the glowing is more like it's the same thing. It's like, hey, you know, shall we go for pink or blue, right? And we just for us the difference is just like, okay, this switch or that switch. Um, so the technology being like the battery or like the functionality, like doing the sensors and all of that stuff, like that will come just in the aftermath because be the thing is still with fashion is, fashion is there to protect you. Fashion is there to, to show your emotions and fashion is there to make a statement and always the time is to tell a story. So that is the way. And like what we do with technology is like, okay, we just give you another tool in the toolbox. Right? And, and light is just one of those things you can use. And wh what is beyond light um, in your plans? Well, so I think we're going to stay a long time with light because light as a technology is actually like the coolest stuff ever because you can do a lot of things. We can do, do like data transfers because like how do you think we get like high speed internet these days? It's class fiber optic material with light. Right, that's how we transfer uh, the data these days. So um, um, y you can do a lot with that. Um, of course, you have like all of those sensors where you can say like, hey, you go in there and then like based off the noise around you, the light will react. Um, of course, you do, can do like blood pressure and stuff like that. I'm a little bit skeptical with that because I like the dress to do what I tell it. Not I don't want my dress to tell me what to do. Like, you know, this is all about power. This is all about control. And since we're in like a so over technique world around us, and you know, we have to track everything, um, uh, control is very important. Of course, the desire for having smart clothing and protecting you, especially and like being smart and like turning you into like superwoman or superman, uh, of course, that it's there. But it's me who is controlling it. I don't want that to tell me what to do. Um, you probably have a different opinion on that. <laughs> no, no, um, it's just, um, I'm, I'm thinking about um, where will the society move? Like, will there be a Facebook jacket where the jacket oh, it's and, the, and the, fabric, yeah. the fabric itself becomes more intelligent? Um, it's like, um, in terms of energy, mm. there's a new fabric where you can uh, move your arm and this is the way you load your jacket. Yeah and the intelligence of the jacket, and the yeah. connection to a platform, and the data transfers, and all, all things you can even imagine. Yeah. Like, imagine your, um, your uh, dress, this Lucy in the sky with diamonds, yeah. the sky with diamonds um, connecting to a social graph, and having the emotions of the social graph in real time on your dress. But do I want that? I don't know. See, this is the this thing. Is, is like this only, is, only yeah. because only because technology can do something doesn't mean I necessarily have to do that. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same also with, with with design. This is all. You know, I'm like very practical, day focused. Yeah. Like, okay, you know. Um, the thing yeah, is, that's, it, that's it, it's, question, it's more what's... about like, for instance, it's like my take on would be, for instance, like I'm ca I'm carrying my personal data with me. Um, I don't need like the business cards on my phone or whatsoever. And if I have a touch point with another dress, if with another piece of clothing, I decide if I exchange data with that other piece of clothing. Like, I'm more interested in that. Or I go to a museum and see, like, a fantastic new painting from a, you know, and I really like this particular shade of, of orange, and I would like to have that orange on my dress, right? Yeah, and I would so like that to share is, it. That, that is, that is what I would like. Because, so but you want all, to have the control yeah, on it. Yeah, That's it's the control. Yeah. It's the control. Because I think like we, even like in software, we feel like, like with all of the customers we are talking with and all of our partners, we feel more and more like, you know, uh, as, you know our lack of privacy. I know especially in Germany, it's like a big deal. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, we're losing more and more power. And, you know, you're like literally naked. <laughs> 
digitally you're naked and you know the last the last resort you have is your like your physical clothing and Again, I think it's like for talking about a society, we have to remember that like we are not normal people, we are techie people. For us, it's like kind of like okay to be online all the time. But I think especially going into mainstream, um, if, you, if you make it like super scary taking over, people will run away from it. Also, do you really want something which makes people look stupid because it has so many functionalities that they can't use it? Right, because that uh, is the how did you focus then on the, on the on the light thing? How did you solve the problems? I mean, you said you want to make it washable and you yeah. want to make it easy and yeah. people don't to be confronted to be yeah. look stupid. How did you approach? Did you approach this? I mean, what did you have to do? Right, so um, there are like many kind of light technologies out there. So, we'll be, but we just looked in a way. It's like okay, so is it like bendable, washable? So there are like some light technologies which actually they're just plastic. And as long as you like put light on, uh, uh, on top of it. Um, and then also the problem is like the wirings and the connections. Um, and we develop like certain kind of mechanism and process to actually make those, those uh, cable connections uh, uh, protected uh, by, by water. Um, it's physics and chemistry is like really awesome. And, um, and, you know, and of course, and the third point is uh, battery technology. Um, and but the nice point, what you just said, is like the interesting thing is like what I think the future will be is that we don't need batteries because we are own, we are our own energy uh, producing hub, right? There are like so great technologies out there like solar, kinetic, Peltier. We are like all active people. Like welcome into Matrix. Yeah, exactly. Like but can you can you welcome like imagine? Matrix. Can you imagine like how much energy you actually produce just like by even like just sitting down you can make an LED glow, right? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, so, and also because, you know, we have to think about being sustainable. So this is like we have to harvest our own technology, our, our own electricity, you know, uh, and then we don't have a problem. Oh, you know, you have to move, get up. It's like, hey, I want to make this glow. I have to move, right? Um, so that is the kind of approach we take. Is Microsoft working on something like this? Yeah, I've heard there is some research going on since two years um, regarding closing. Um, but I'm personally not involved in that project. Um, but I'm sure that we are um, working on like this energy things. Um, and of course, Microsoft is especially interested in connecting things um, to a platform to make you more efficient. Um, it's for health apps, of course, obvious. Um, but working on, on, on closing um, also is, is about, of course, security. It's about um, when you connect to a platform, how could you integrate your, your bunch of data you have somewhere in the cloud um, to make um, your experience more, more efficient or even more emotional could also be. So yeah. like um, if you wear something and you have an emotion um, while you are wearing something or while you decide to, to shop uh, a new jacket, you want to share it immediately. And sharing this, this is also about expressing yourself. It's, yeah. it's not the standalone clothing. That's, that's the point I want to make. It's not just, just the clothing you are wearing at the moment, like with no connection to somewhere. Of course, you are in control. That's not, not, uh, not a point to discuss. But um, I think everybody wants to have the chance to share emotion, even if it's through closing. Yes. So there is like, for instance, what you can do is like you have like, you know, light LED, sorry. Um, so you have like a pulse sensor and then like, you know, if you like feel really stressed, like your, your dress goes up or like your piece of cloth goes up in red and it's like, don't talk to me. Yeah, it's red, right? Yeah, and then when you like relax, yeah. it's green. It's like, hey, chill. Everything is fine. However, like, what is I, that I something think users really want? Do you think? Do you think? It's, yeah, their yeah? project. Yeah. Their project. There's actually a project in America. They have the concept, and and they're starting to producing it. And um, so, I mean, of course, it's not like for everybody. It's the same thing. It's like not everybody likes cotton. Not everybody likes silk. Not everyone likes likes blue. So it's like a taste kind of thing. Um, however, I think like I'm. 
I'm really concerned about this whole data control because I've seen like really, for me, really do, scary stuff. Would you want to be your clothes connected to the internet or to a platform? That was Tina saying. Is that something it's, you would yeah. approach too? I, I would like it again, the control? control, 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 because like my absolute nightmare would be if you, for instance, have like a diabetic who goes in a supermarket and buys uh, um, a box of chips and then his uh, uh, health insurance is cancelling on him because they knew exactly where he was because his stress or sensor was ever communicated at. And that is scary because that shit is possible. That technology is there and people already, and I, th and I think that is super scary because, you know, we kind of like become like lemmings and like, here you go, big brother, back again. And we have to be like really, really But you careful. want to have your clothes either more offline than online. I'm fine with like being it connected, right? You know, I would like go to the Brandenburger Gate and meet with my friends and we can do like, uh, we can do like a flash mob because we can sync our lights or something like that. That is super cool. Works, happens, technology, thank you. All, all of that, right? But it's our control. I know I sound like, you know, I'm repeating myself, but this it control, it's so, so important. And, you know, and, uh, you know, Clothing are like our last private part we have in this world, and we have re we really have to be careful, uh, um, you know, what we're gonna what we're gonna do with it. I'm completely with you. Uh, we need to control our data, of course, and I also see these insurance cases, and um, but it's not only um, that you get in trouble uh, when you eat uh, uh, chips as a diabetic pe uh, uh, person. It's also about just one example, if you live healthy, uh, your insurance uh, will slow down. Yeah, but who lives healthy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the definition is like, who is defining that I'm healthy or not? Yes, of course. Sorry. At the, um, mo at the yeah. moment, it's I, I, your, I like it's this discussion because company. it's going from fashion to health insurance. <laughs> yeah. So that's it's really your great. insurance company. <laughs> Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. I mean, like, there are a lot of, like, great things. It's like, for instance, okay, like, people will be able to live much more independently because, like, their pulse gets, get, uh, um, is getting tracked and stuff like that. So, like, if something's happening, they have a heart attack. So, like, you know, your grandparents can live much more, like, independent for a long time because if something happens, there's immediately, you know, what's going on. Of course, that is fantastic. So let's, let's take this uh, for the end of this discussion a step further. I know you know that there are people implanting RFID chips under the skin. Yeah. So so this is a fashion statement too nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, right. It's, you know, everything is a fashion statement. Like, you know, oh. there was like this thing of like tattooing, you know, yeah. was to be like a really bad and now it's like a fashion statement. Now it's like almost conservative. Like, oh, you get a tattoo, like, okay, what's next? Um, the next so is RFID ship. So yeah. there are biohackers saying if you don't implant something into you, you will be I mean, the Amish people. The of The RFID features. ship is, is, is uh, it's... The shit of the, of it's the past, past already is really it? old it's, shit. It's, yeah, it's really old shit. <laughs> um, so the next thing will be more. No, it's not. You know, we know sensor. this guy. We know this guy who implanted the RFID chip, and now he's got the RFID chip, but he has no door or card to open with it. So <laughs> it's useless. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So what um, was the next thing? Sensors. Who? Um, I would say in ten. Oh, in 20 years, we are, we are getting rid of all physical devices. So it's more about um, voice and gesture and hopefully not uh, the sensor in the brain, who, which is also in the market uh, today uh, on, a, on a research perspective. Which works um, how? Which it's like uh, controlling your device via thinking. Okay. Hmm. This scares me. Um, yeah, but the future, yeah. It's, I think it's about voice control and gesture control and getting rid of devices because even a display um, with, with a new fabric, um, depending on how you compress uh, the fabric, it can become a display. So why do you need a phone? Why do you need a band? Why do you need uh, even... Um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, a mobile or a laptop or whatever. There's no, that's not necessary anymore. And your future view? I think we will have a huge problem if we don't, if we don't solve the issue with electricity and energy and battery systems. Because if you're completely dependent on like your devices around, like for instance, like your clothes make you 
walk faster. Um, and, and when the electricity is not there, then all of a sudden you have like to walk normally or you can't walk you know, on your own or you can't connect with your people. So I think like on, on that level, we really have to make sure that we like get the whole energy stuff working first and we have to do that right now. I think in between hardware is becoming more important because software, you can only do with software that to the point where hardware lets you. So we have to like open up boxes and manipulate them. But um, I like this idea with the whole integrated stuff. Again, security and, and control is one thing, but I think you know, in the big thing, in, in the big scale is like, where the F do we get our energy from? Right, you know, so like all of those electric cars, like super awesome, but like from where do we get that energy from? And I think that will be like the biggest issue beyond fashion and cars and everything. Yeah, and who is in control of content? Yeah. Um, so Ask journalists. No. Yeah. But next panel. <laughs> That's the next panel. Next, so, next, next discussion. Yeah, thank you very much for this really interesting uh, uh, panel. I, I liked it that we came from fashion design centers to health insurance, uh, sensors under the skin and now energy. Um, this is what fashion tech is all about, isn't it? Thank you very much.